Imagine that your life is depicted as a piece of land. And then the question that we want to ask is, well, what does the soil look like on that land? And what's growing on there? And what's going on there? So the scriptures use a picture of seeds being planted and of fruit growing that depicts our lives as Christians and the work that God wants to do in our lives. So we want to use that as a picture and ask ourselves the question, if I'm asking that God's will be done in my life and I'm seeking to do his will, and then I I know that I'm not alone, that God's spirit indwells me, empowers me, well, the result of that is this life that I get to live, this land that depicts my character, it depicts my actions and who I really am. And There are things that we can do naturally that we're really good at. It takes no effort and we enjoy it and we will go down that path and do those things all the time if we were not corrected. The Bible gives us a list of those works and it calls them the works of the flesh. It's the things that our flesh, our body, our natural desires will tend to do. It's like having weeds all over the place. So weeds don't need any encouragement to grow. They'll just do their thing. So what are the weeds of human life? And that's found in Galatians chapter 5. And I'm going to read these few verses. It's Galatians 5 and from verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness. And that's all got to do with sexual immorality. Idolatry, which is serving something as if it's God that's not God, by putting something else above God. Sorcery, and that sorcery, I don't want us to think of like you have to be a witch or a wizard. It's believing that there is power in something mystical or spiritual that doesn't come from God. Hatred. Contentions jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, which is like having parties, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when you look at that list, you're probably going to find yourself somewhere there. There's something in there, and hopefully it's not all of them, but something in there, you're going to be like, yeah, that one, that's that's the part of my life that I know I need to work on. If there are things in there, and maybe you tick a lot of those boxes, well, that's the work that God wants to do in your life, because he wants to bring out good fruit. But that good fruit is not going to grow if you are busy with all of those things. And in each of our lives, there are going to be sections where the ground is hard. It's parts where we don't we don't go there. We don't go in and check what's going on. And those are the parts of our lives that we keep ignoring. The parts where nothing good is ever going to grow. So if your life is filled with that, and I know that's an extreme But sometimes the extreme helps us to understand a little bit clearer. If your life was just completely barren and the soil was hard and nothing was growing, well, you're going to have to go and find fulfillment. You're going to have to go and find fruit and sustenance and anything that really gives you life. You're going to have to go and find that elsewhere. So where are you going to go and find it? Well, you're going to go look for it in maybe your occupation, in a hobby. You're going to look for it in sport. You're going to look for it in friendships, in relationships. You're going to go and look for it in anything that can give you an identity and give you this brief little high, and then life is worth it for that moment. So we don't want to be able to, we don't want to live lives that where we have to rely on those little things when God says that there is so much more, because the godly fruit that he wants to bring in our lives is a type of fruit that fills us from the inside. 
It sustains you. It brings you contentment and peace. And it allows you to help others and not just to live for yourself and all the selfish things that we just read about. Now, that godly fruit, God says, that is brought about by his spirit. And in the same passage in Galatians chapter 5, it lists the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit, and listen to this list and see the contrast between them. The, f- the works of the flesh are the things that, mm, yeah, we don't want to be around people like that and we don't want to be people like that. And the fruits of the spirit, yeah, well, these are things we would love to have in our lives. Because the fruit of the spirit is love <laughs> and joy and peace and long-suffering, patience. The fruit of the spirit is kindness and goodness and faithfulness. It is gentleness, self-control, and against those things there is no law. So when we see that God is able to bring about that godly fruit in our lives, those are the people that you might know, people that are genuine, people that you want to be around because they are wholesome, they're faithful, you can rely on them, people that make you feel valued, people that have the right words to say at the right time. Those are people who have godly fruit in their lives because they've allowed that fruit to grow. And that's really what we want to look at. We want to say, well, okay, so the works of the flesh, that's easy. We know how to do that. But how do we get godly fruit? And to to bear godly fruit, to allow that to grow in our lives, well, that process is a little bit different. So that needs to be very intentional. It's something that's going to take time, but it's something that is very possible. It's something that God wants for every single one of us. We want to have a look and we want to say, if I want those fruits, well, the first thing I have to realize is that the work of the flesh is completely against the work of the Spirit. So I cannot be busy with the things of the flesh and expect the fruit of the Spirit to grow. Because that is like trying to allow God and His Spirit to soften the soil and to allow things to grow. But then we keep going back to all the old things, the destructive things, which is just trampling on. It's just hardening again. And it's it's killing everything that's there. So the solution, the very first step, is you have to kill the things that are killing the fruit. You have to stop doing the things that are destructive, which means if you need to stop getting drunk, then stop getting drunk. If you need to stop being angry and shouting at people and having outbursts of of anger and wrath, then stop doing that. If you need to stop being jealous or envious, if you need to stop harboring hatred, if you need to stop being sexually immoral, then stop doing that. That's the first thing. And God says in a beautiful way that he will help you to stop that. Because there will always be an escape for every single temptation. That's his promise to you. But you've got to stop that. And once you've stopped those things, well, then you're going to see how your heart starts to soften. And all of those hardened areas, whenever something happens in life and you have a moment of like, Hmm, yeah, I know. I'm not living the way that I should. I know I've got stuff that I have to work on and stuff I have to deal with. But when that hurt comes and you've got a choice to make, often what we'll do is instead of allowing God to soften our hearts to work that ground, we'll be like, yeah, I'm not ready. And we'll go back to the things that we've always known. We'll go back to those same things that give us that quick fix, that little high. And we'll trample again and harden and put things under the rug. And that's the moment that I want you to be conscious of and say, okay, so when life starts tilling the ground, when God starts tilling the ground, or when you ask him to till the ground, then just allow it to happen. And it's going to take time and it's not easy, but it is so necessary and so beautiful. And once that ground is soft, once you're ready to receive the seeds that God wants to plant there, well, then that's the next step. That next step is to get God's word into your heart by listening to messages, by reading your Bible. 
And as you read, and that's why the psalmist, it's so beautiful. How can a young man keep his way pure? Because that's a tough question. How can he do that? By hiding God's word in his heart. And when you have God's word in your heart, those are the seeds that are planted. That's the, the next step in the process. You plant the seed and then you need to water it. So how long does it take to plant a seed? That's not long. That's something that you can do. How long does it take to water? That's also not long. You can water. How do you water? Well, you water by engaging, by speaking about it, by being mindful of spiritual things, by allowing yourself to be controlled by God's Holy Spirit in your decisions. All of that is the surrender. It's the letting go. It's saying, yes, I want that water, I want that spirit to, to be in my life and to fill me and to control me. And as you water, God promises that he will provide the increase. He will allow those seeds to grow. And then he promises that his spirit will produce the fruit. How long does that take? I don't know. That's in God's time. But what I do know is that that fruit is good. That fruit is the most beautiful thing that could ever happen in your life. That is when you can see that your whole character changes and those around you see that it changes and they benefit from that fruit. And that means that you don't have to go and find fruit elsewhere, fake fruit, false fruit, fruit that doesn't sustain and fill you because you're going to be filled by God's spirit from within. And when you can... When you taste that, well, then you realize this is living. This is the way that God wants me to live. Not in the ways of the flesh, in the ways of the world, not in all of the ways that I've known, but God wants me to live in this new way, to walk in this new way, to be led by the Spirit in this new way. And all that means is just choosing spiritual things choosing godly things in those moments. And as you do that, God's fruit is going to start growing in your life. And you are going to see the work that God wants to do. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. And that fruit that God brings is the greatest work that could ever happen in your life, where you can make the most important things important. And you can live in the way that God wants you to live. So be encouraged. Living for the things of this world and living for the flesh is just destruction and death and emptiness. And it's going to leave you bitter. It's going to leave you clamoring for more and more because you're going to be discontent. But living in the spirit, well, that is life. And that is wholeness. And that is being content and godly, filled with the Spirit and bringing forth fruit of the Spirit, which are the most beautiful characteristics that we could ever bring. So let's choose that in our small moments, big moments. Let's encourage each other to keep pressing on and to make sure that God is pleased with the field of our lives. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have given us your spirit. And Father, thank you that we can live a life that is different because of your power within us. And Father, I pray for every single person listening to this, including myself. I pray that we would be willing to allow you to soften our hearts. And Father, that, that we would spend time in your word plant those seeds. Father, that we would speak about it, encourage each other daily, water what has been planted. And Father, and may we rejoice when we see what you are going to grow in our lives. Thank you that you have made all of this possible through your son, Christ Jesus, who gave his very life so that we could live a new life, an abundant life, a life filled with your fruit, as we thank you for this in his precious name. Amen.